Cavalcade of America. Starring Conrad Nagel and William Ide in My Hunt After the Captain. Presented by the DuPont Company, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. Good evening. This is Bill Hamilton. Among DuPont's better things for better living through chemistry is DuPont Rug Anchor. Most of us think of home as a place of great safety. And yet each year, three million people are injured in accidents in homes. The records show that many of these accidents were caused by small rugs that slip and slide, especially rugs at the head or foot of a flight of stairs. You can help eliminate this source of danger in your home by using DuPont Rug Anchor Sponge Rubber Underlay. Rug Anchor is placed between the rug and the floor and helps prevent the rug from slipping. It also keeps dirt from working up into the underside of the rug. Rug Anchor can be trimmed to fit your rug, and it's waterproof and mothproof. Make your home a safer place. Ask for DuPont Rug Anchor at leading rug cleaners, rug, and department stores. Rug Anchor is one of the DuPont Company's better things for better living through chemistry. With Conrad Nagel as Dr. Oliver Wendell Holmes and William Ith as Captain Oliver Wendell Holmes, Jr., here is My Hunt After the Captain. <laughs> September 1862. The streets of Boston are deserted for it's long past midnight. Suddenly, a messenger appears walking quickly. As his eyes light on a certain house, he breaks into a clattering trot. He stops in the doorway, raises the heavy brass knocker, on which are engraved initials famous throughout all America, O.W.H. He lets the knocker fall. Again and again. Yes. Yes, what is it? Telegraph, sir. For Dr. Oliver Wendell Holmes. Telegraph? Oh, all right. Uh, I, I'm Dr. Holmes. Here you are, sir. Thank you. Oliver Wendell Holmes, Beacon Street, Boston, Massachusetts. Your son, Captain O.W. Holmes, Jr., shot through the neck in Battle of Antietam. Wound thought not mortal. Signed, Captain W.G. LeDuc. And we know for this night, there'll be no more sleep in this house. Next stop, Frederick. That's where you get off, Dr. Holmes. Oh. Oh, thank you very much, Conductor. From there, you'll have to hire a wagon and take you to the battlefield. You uh, are going to Antietam, aren't you, sir? Yes, I am. Uh, may I ask how you knew that? Oh, for days now, this train's been full of men like you. Fathers going out to the battlefield to look for their wounded sons. It has? Yes, sir. Uh, by the way... How do you know my name was Holmes? Oh, I recognize you, sir, from your pictures. Everyone knows what the autocrat at the breakfast table looks like. Although I must say you're a little shorter than I expected, Doctor. Yes. And I always make sure to be photographed uh, sitting down. <laughs> <laughs> is your son, is uh, he on the short side, too? My son is well over six feet, sir. Oh? Yes, sir. I have to look up to my son. And on occasion, uh, on occasion, mind you... My son looks up to his father. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope you find him, sir. I do indeed. I'll find him, Conductor. He's just a boy, 21, and he needs me. I'll find him. Come on. Huh, what's the matter? We've stopped. Yeah, it's a local station. We're on a side, and I guess there's a special going the other way. Yeah, here she comes. Looks like she's going to make a stop here, too. Taking on water, I guess. Yeah, does this train always have to wait on sidings for other trains to go by? No, sir. This is the first time we ever had... 
Say, must be a mighty important train. Wonder what on earth she can be carrying that's so important. I don't know, sir. Let's go out to the back platform and take a look. Yeah, it's all right. Dan. Dan, where are you? Dan. Dad. Captain. I'm Captain Captain Holmes. What's the matter? Wake up, Captain. Oh, yes, who are you? Sergeant Lloyd, sir. The doc asked me to keep an eye on you. No. Train stopped. Where are we, Sergeant? We're still in Maryland, Captain. We're taking on water and additional medical supplies. You see, there's more than 100 wounded on this train besides yourself. How are you feeling? Better. Much better, but why'd you wake me up? Well, you were yelling in your sleep, sir, and I, I oh, thought maybe... I... So I was dreaming. What was I yelling about, Sergeant? Your father, sir. I heard you calling for him, so... I did? Well, I, I guess he couldn't hear me, Sergeant. <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> Do you know when we get to Hagerstown? It won't be long, Captain. Good. I, I changed trains there. Ooh. What, what's the matter? My neck. Oh, just healing pains. Uh, your neck's fine. Your, your neck's all right, Captain, but... Uh, but what? The doc's worried about your eyes. My eyes? Yeah, he said you had them closed tight all the while I was bandaging your neck and wouldn't open them. You see, he was afraid... What's the matter? Don't you see good out of them? No, 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 no. I, I, I can see all right. It's just an effort to keep them open. Come on, Captain. Try. Open them up. That's it. Now, look. Can you see out that window? What do you see out that window? On that other track out there? What do you see? Uh, it's a train. Uh-huh. Now, which way is it going? Well, it isn't. It's standing still on the siding. That's right. Now, then, do you see anything on the back platform of that train? Two men. Uh, can you describe them, sir? Uh, one's in uniform. Soldier? No, no, he, he's a conductor. <laughs> yes. The other kind is kind of short, little shrimp. That's right. Can't make him out. Well, fine, fine. You're going to be all right, Captain. Well, we're moving again. In a little while, you'll be in Hagerstown. Hagerstown? Yeah. That's where I change trains. What? Oh, hello. What are you sitting here alone at the depot for? I'm waiting for a train. North or south? North. You always put your head in your arms and sleep and you're waiting for a train? Only when I'm sleepy. Please go away. You're a captain, ain't you? Yes. Union captain? Yes. You've been wounded? Yes. What are you doing here in Hagerstown? I'm waiting for a train. Now, will you please See go that away? See over there across the tracks? The white one with blue shutters. I see it. I live there. That's nice. My name's Frank Kennedy. I'm pleased to meet you. Now, will you please go over there to that little house with the blue shutters and stay there? I can't. Not without bringing you back with me. What? It's Jonesy. Jonesy told me to tell you there won't be any train for at least four hours. And why don't you come over to our house and lie down on the couch? No, thank you. Thank you very much. I thought you said you were sleepy. And look, that bandage around your neck is coming off. Jonesy will fix it for you. Tell me, is this Jones a doctor? Well, not exactly. We've been taking in a lot of wounded when we see him waiting for trains. And Jonesy kind of fixes them up. Well, it's very kind of Mr. Jones, but please tell him from me that I... there you are, Frank. Good afternoon. Uh, Captain, isn't it? Well, uh, yes, Miss. Captain Holmes, 20th Massachusetts Volunteers. Uh, Excuse me for not rising, ma'am. My legs are still a bit shaky. I particularly wouldn't want to trust them in the presence of a beautiful young lady. Oh, I take it you haven't seen any young ladies recently, Captain. Frankie, didn't you ask Captain Holmes to come over to the house and lie down until his train comes? I did ask him, Jonesy, but he won't come. Keeps on saying... Hey, wait a minute. Are you, are you Jonesy? Why, yes, why? Oh, nothing, nothing at all. It's only that the boy, well, he, he completely misunderstood me. Uh, Miss Jones, I would consider it a privilege to step over to your house and rest a moment. Oh, 
boy. Is there a message for me, Wilson Dudley? I'll see, sir. Take me a few minutes. I beg your pardon, sir. I just got off that train. Is there a hotel in the town of Frederick? Why, yes, there is, sir. The United States Hotel, two blocks west. Two blocks west. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, sir. one moment, please. Aren't you Dr. Oliver Wendell Holmes? I am, sir. Well. And I believe you have the advantage of me. You don't know me, Dr. Holmes. My name is Dudley, Wilson Dudley. I'm a great admirer of your writing, sir. Well. I should consider it an honor to shake your hand, Doctor. I'm pleased to make your acquaintance, Mr. Dudley. Uh, you live here in Frederick? No, Dr. Holmes. I'm from Harrisburg. If you're ever passing through that magnificent metropolis, sir... I deem it a pleasure. Thank you, you, thank you. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'd best be getting up to the hotel. I'd like to secure a room. There are no rooms, Doctor. No rooms? No, sir. I took the last one yesterday. The entire place is loaded down with fathers, like you and me, sir. Am I correct in assuming you have a son who's been wounded? You are, sir. A strange phenomenon is going on here, Dr. Holmes. Fathers come here to Frederick from all parts of the north, the last stop on the railroad line. From here south, you hire a wagon or a knocked cart or the walk. All day long, you see the lines of fathers, middle-aged to white-bearded patriarchs, commuting to and from the battlefield, seeking word of their lost sons. Well, there's never been anything like it in the history of the world, sir. And do they ever find them, their sons? Sometimes, doctor. They find them wandering around in the woods nearby or living in some out-of-the-way hole, wounded or half-crazed. Sometimes they find them on the battlefield. Where they fell. I see. And you, sir, have you found your son? No, doctor. Your eldest? My only son, doctor. But I'm optimistic. I've covered Antietam pretty thoroughly, and he's still not on the battlefield. Uh, The day I heard he was last seen on a stretcher, being carried to the train. Why, he may be home in Harrisburg by now, in his own bed. I sincerely hope so, sir. That's why I came down here to the telegraph office to find out. Oh, boy. Yes, sir? Did you find any message for me? Wilson Dudley? Yes, sir. Just arrived. Here you are, sir. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, what did I tell you, Holmes? He must be in Harrisburg by now. You'll excuse me while... By I... all means, sir. Is he... Here. Yeah. You read it. Robert arrived home this morning. He... Died last night on the train. Love, mother. Here's the key, Dr. Holmes. The key? You won't be needing that room at the hotel anymore. You might as well have it. And I wish... I wish you better luck than I had. Listening to My Hunt After the Captain, starring Conrad Nagel and William Ith on the Cavalcade of America, presented by the DuPont Company, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. In the year 1862, Dr. Oliver Wendell Holmes of Boston received a telegraph message that his son had been wounded at the Battle of Antietam. The doctor sets out for the battlefield in search of his son. So, you're Dr. Holmes, eh? And on your way to the Antietam battlefield, eh? Yes, yes, I am. Uh, Looking for your son? Yes. Yeah. Well, lots of fathers come out here looking for... Yes, so I've heard. Uh... If you'll excuse me, sir, I'd rather not talk if you don't mind. I'd just like to... Whoa, whoa. whoa. What's the matter? Why'd you stop? Oh, we're here, Doctor. Antietam. You can get out and walk around the battlefield if you like. Yes, I'd like to do that. I'll wait here and take you back to Frederick. Thank you. I won't be long. I won't be long. So... So this is a battlefield. Hmm. The carnage of fratricide. 
the stupid, senseless thing called civil war. A carpet of heroes for the gods of war to walk upon. Can one of these still forms be my son? No, no, I mustn't think that. My son's alive. He's not here. I only came to make sure. One has to begin to hunt some... That boy lying over there. That tall, fair one. Can that be? My... Faster. Faster. It looks like my son, but... A captain, too. No. No, I mustn't touch him. Whoever he is, he must lie where he fell until his country moves him. I'll just circle around him and... No, this is not my son. I thank thee, Lord, that this is not my son. So you didn't find him here, Dr. Holmes? No. Thank God I didn't find him. Well, uh, what are you going to do now? I'm going back to Frederick. And get on a train going north. At every sizable town, I'll get off and inquire. And then wait for the next train. Yeah, you'll have a lot of waiting, Doctor. It's my son who's waiting, driver. And he's waiting for me. Then I'll find him. I'll find him. Hello, Jonesy. Time for your glass of milk, Captain Holmes, and the cookies. <laughs> Thanks, Jonesy. Put them on the table, please. Uh, are you comfortable out here on the veranda? Is it too cool? Perhaps you'd like a blanket or another pillow. No, I don't think so. And your poor head. Does it hurt much? No. Um, sit down, Jonesy. Yes, Captain. Oh, not over there, over here on this chair near me. Yes, Captain. Jonesy, I've been thinking things over very carefully. And I've come to the conclusion that I'm having the best time of my life right here in your house. Why, thank you, Captain Holmes. I'm sure my aunt and I are... Yes, your aunt is very kind. It's not, however, your aunt I was thinking of. Oh. Oh, you mean the parties. Well, we'll have some more people over this evening. That is, if you're feeling well enough Well, to... I feel fine, and I was not thinking of the parties. I was thinking of you. Of me? Oh, but Captain... Call me Wendell, won't you, Jonesy? Don't you think, Captain, that... Jonesy, when a man is invited to spend a few minutes in a lady's house and he stays on for three days and he still doesn't want to leave, don't you think he's... All right, Wendell. Good. Now, what were you saying? Oh, I, I was just thinking about your parents. I mean, won't they be worried? Hmm. Trying to get rid of me, huh? Oh, no, of course not, Captain. Wendell? I mean Wendell. But won't he be worried? Your father? I've already sent two telegrams telling him I'm here. Oh, but telegrams aren't always delivered these days. Why, your mother's probably frantic. And your father? Well, he's undoubtedly mobilized all the readers of the Atlantic Monthly into a search party <laughs> if he doesn't come down here looking for you himself. My father? Oh, no, not my father. Oh, but I hear that the country around the battlefield is filled with fathers looking for their sons. Jonesy, you're a sweet girl, even an intelligent girl. But you don't know my father. Why, nothing ever worries him, least of all me. He's much too busy to be concerned about me. Now, may I have my milk, please? Yes, Wendell. And the cookies? Yes, Wendell. Now, now, move a little closer, please. I always prefer to rest my head on somebody's shoulder when I'm having milk and cookies. Yes, Wendell. There. That's nice. That's very nice. Uh, I beg your pardon, madam, but if any soldiers come by this house on the retreat from Antietam, you see my son... No, was... sir, they haven't. Oh, Corporal, Corporal. Yes, sir, what is it? May I inquire what regiment you belong to? You see, I'm 
I'm looking for my son. Oh, oh, well, uh, I'm with the 3rd Pennsylvania, sir. What's he with? The 20th Massachusetts. I'm sorry, sir. Ain't seen one of them in months. Excuse me, sir. Can you direct me to the nearest hotel? Why, yes, there's one just around. Why, it's Dr. Holmes. Don't you remember me, Doctor? Wilson Dudley. We met at the telegraph station in Fred. Oh, of course. How are you, Mr. Dudley? I trust your wife is bearing up well. We're making the best of it, sir. Or trying to. But what brings you to Harrisburg, Doctor? Mr. Dudley, I've stopped off at every way station between here and the battlefield looking for my son. You mean that you haven't found him yet? No, I haven't. But that's impossible. Why, I heard of him only the other day. What? Why, yes. You did? Where? How is he? Well, the last I heard, he was feeling fine, making love to all the girls in Hagerstown. Hagerstown? <laughs> yes, that's in Maryland. You see, Mrs. Kennedy, at whose house he's staying, is a friend of my wife's. Well, she wrote us that he... Oh, yes, excuse me, Mr. Dudley. I must get to the telegraph station. One block east, and... Uh... Thank you. Thank you very much. And don't forget, the name is Kennedy in Hagerstown. Here you are, boy. This telegraph message. Yes, sir? Uh, uh, better see if you can read it. I'm a little nervous. My handwriting is... All right, sir. Oliver Wendell Holmes, Jr., care of Mrs. Kennedy, Hagerstown, Maryland. Just happened to be in Harrisburg. Telegraph me if coming through here on way home. Signed, Dad. I got it, sir. Here's your answer, Dr. Holmes. It just come in. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <sighs> Passing through Harrisburg on way home tomorrow. We'll be in fourth seat in third car, feeling wonderful. Wendell, my son. My son. Thank God. <laughs> This is it. This is his train. <clears throat> I mustn't be nervous now or emotional. Harrisburg? <laughs> Wendell hates scenes. Let him off, please. Oh, conductor, is this the train from Hagerstown? Hey, yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, help you up the steps, sir? Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's see now. Oh, I beg your pardon, sir. Oh, that's all right. Did he say fourth seat in third car or... Oh, excuse me, madam. Or oh, third seat in... Oh, dear, I mustn't be nervous now. Wendell wouldn't like me to be in there. Here, this must be the car. <clears throat> Careful now. No scenes Wendell wouldn't like. The first scene, second, third. There. There he is. Well. Hello, son. Well, hello, Dad. What on earth are you doing in Harrisburg? Oh, just there on a little business. It's quite a coincidence running into you this way, isn't it? And so the story ended. Back home in Boston with his son, Dr. Holmes put pen to paper and wrote of his experience. Cherished in American literature, My Hunt After the Captain appeared in the Atlantic Monthly in 1862. And down through the years, we hear those beautiful words with which Dr. Oliver Wendell Holmes closed his article, revealing an American father's love for his son. Fling open the window blinds of the chamber that looks out on the waters and towards the western sun. Let the joyous light shine in upon the pictures that hang upon its walls and the shelves thick set with the names of poets and philosophers and sacred teachers in whose pages our boys learn that life is noble only when it is held cheap by the side of honor and duty. 
lay him in his own bed and let him sleep off his aches and weariness. So comes down another night over this household, unbroken by any messenger of evil tidings, a night of peaceful rest and grateful thoughts. For this, our son and brother was dead and is alive again, and was lost and is found. Bill Hamilton speaking for the DuPont Company. The ninth most common element in the world is titanium. There is more of it than all the lead, zinc, tin, antimony, nickel, copper, gold, and silver combined. But it wasn't until after the First World War that anyone heard much about titanium. Refiners who came across it in iron ore thought it was an impurity. And then in 1921, science discovered that titanium dioxide was a wonderfully white pigment. Since that time... It has been used in manufacturing fine paints, enamels, and paper. Shortly before World War II, the United States Bureau of Mines developed a way of refining titanium metal. They began making it in small amounts for research, but there was no commercial manufacture. Meanwhile, DuPont chemists went to work to learn more about this new metal. And now, in a pilot plant at Newport, Delaware, we are turning out 100 pounds a day. Titanium, as a metal is so new even today that no one can safely guess what its many uses will be. In appearance, it is shiny, with a color somewhere between silver and stainless steel. It's strong, light, and has great resistance to corrosion. In its pure form, it is ductile and easy to work. Our task now is to learn what titanium will do, what its uses will be. To this end, we are offering metal for research purposes to industrial and university laboratories. For example, makers of automobiles, airplanes, business machines, surgical instruments, and radio and television sets are interested. And scientists believe alloys of titanium may be as far superior to the pure metal as stainless steel is to iron. We hope it will not be long before we can tell you more about this newest of metals placed at the service of mankind by chemical science. Titanium. Now manufactured as one of the DuPont Company's Better Things for Better Living Through Chemistry. Tonight's cavalcade play, My Hunt After the Captain, was written by Arthur Aaron. Music was composed by Arden Cornwell, conducted by Donald Bryan. Conrad Nagel is currently appearing with Madeline Carroll in the Broadway success, Goodbye, My Fancy. And William Ive is starring in his own Broadway production, Lend an Ear. This is Ted Pearson reminding you that this week is birthday week for the camp girl, Campfire Girls. rather. Cavalcade wishes success to this organization which seeks to perpetuate ideals of home, of health, and character in the young girls of America. Next week, Cavalcade will present the distinguished star of stage and screen, Charles Boyer. Cavalcade of America is directed by John Zoller and comes to you each week from the stage of the Long Acre Theater on Broadway in New York and is presented by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.